attended Central State University in Wilberforce, Ohio, a Region 6 representative of the five presenters in Western New York, Southern Ontario, and a finder of the Atlantis School for Gifted Youngsters, Atlantis Build Talk Radio, and Kana Publishing. During his 10 years as a freelance writer, radio personality, and 22 years as a youth advocate, Saladin has been published in print and online in a wide variety of publications and website worldwide and created various youth programs, projects, and initiatives. Through his niche Atlantis School website, he has published 325 plus articles, achieved a number one Google page ranking and consistent global web traffic of um, 119,000 visitors per month. He is the author of 19 books, five of which are part of a curatorial activity, activism archive initiative at the British Library. Additionally, <clears throat> he has recorded four full-length albums, worked as a program consultant for the History Channel series Gangland, and has been globally cited as a subject matter expert on Jay-Z's cultural affiliations. In 2017, Saladin was nominated for the 21st Century Scholarship Award at the second annual BP Awards in Atlanta, Georgia. In 2018, a permanent life-size display and an AV narrative of Saladin speaking about his family's Underground Railroad heritage was included in the Freedom Gallery at the Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center. In 2018, as part of the Atlantis School for Gifted Youngsters, Saladin created seven online youth outreach development courses, a rites of passage program, and an Amazon Direct animation series. He is a featured historian in the IMAX film Into America's Wild, narrated by Morgan Freeman, and hosted by Ariel Toto and John Harrington in the six-part docuseries Enslaved that is executive produced and starring Samuel L. Jackson and directed by three-time Emmy award-winning journalist Simcha Jakabakichi. And I butchered that name and I am very sorry. <laughs> Um, Saladin is the 2019 Martin Luther King Jr. Civil Rights Achievement Award recipient and is currently a commissioner for the Human Rights Commission in the city of Niagara Falls, New York, president of the Hamilton and Eads Genetic Research and Development LLC, an elementary school educator, visitor experience specialist, community liaison at the Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center, and a public speaker. And it is our great joy to welcome him so that he can impart his wisdom and engage our students this morning. So welcome, Mr. Saladin, Saladin Ra. Okay, okay. You know, whenever I hear that bio, it makes me think that my head is going to get so big that you might have to open up like both doors for me to fit out of here. You know, I, when I was like your age, I never would have thought that I would be doing the things that I do right now in my life, right? And that is to say, when you see certain people and you think about where they're at in their life right now, most people, when they're your age, they don't say, you know what, I can't wait till I get older and become a drug addict. Or, oh, I can't wait till I'm older so I can be an alcoholic. Or, oh my God, I can't wait till I get older and I can do this or that. Things happen to people along their course of life. Right? And a lot of times, the places that you see people in, they don't predict or expect to be in those type of positions. Right? Um, so that is to kind of say, your journey in life is not a straight line. You know, everything you see around you is composed of matter. Matter is energy. Energy is also light. When you look at light waves, light waves, even though the sun is 93 million miles away and it takes approximately 8 minutes and 30 seconds for light to reach the surface of the earth, that's not a straight line. When you look at sound waves, they're waves. Your course in life operates under the same type of conditions. The goals and the plans that you have right now at your age, it's not going to be a straight line for you to get there, right? So today I'm going to talk a little bit about personal development. Um, I don't have a teleprompter. I don't have any notes. I'm speaking directly from my heart and experiences that I've lived through and that I'm living through right now 
to hopefully give you some insight into helping you navigate your journey for you to be successful in your undertakings. Um, first, I wanted to thank um, Principal Spillman, um, Cassandra, Rebecca, and the staff here at the Academy for putting together a series like this because it's very, very, very important, very important. This world as you see it is a change in landscape. And those of you who are young people, you're being prepared to be the ambassadors of the future. Meaning this world that you're looking at right now, that you see a lot of adults messing up, they're going to get ready to hand it to you. So you have to be prepared for what you're going to do with it because some of us as adults are going to leave it behind and not care about what we're giving to you. So you're going to have to take the initiative to do something with what is going to be left behind for you, which is to willfully bring more beauty to this world and to repair some of the things that adults have broken. Does that make sense to all of you? Okay. So now, in your journey in life, there are certain things that are universal. It doesn't matter what geographic landscape that you come from. It doesn't matter how you define yourself or what gender pronouns you use or what the complexion your skin looks like or your age. There are certain things about this journey in life that are universal. They apply to everybody. But then there are other things that are unique to specific groups of people. And then there are also other things that are unique to you. So I'm going to speak to those different layers of the journey. So when we're talking about personal growth and development, envision it as a journey, right? Um, how many people, by show of hands, have traveled somewhere in a car and you used driving directions? How many people? Right? Now, sometimes those driving directions are accurate. <laughs> but a lot of times, those driving directions don't tell you about certain type of things that are going to be along that landscape that you have to find out about once you get there. So that is to say, the map is not the terrain. The two entirely different things. You know, in school right now, you're learning about a lot of different concepts of life. You're philosophizing about a lot of different things. Um, there are certain things that you're learning that represent the map of life. Because some of you haven't gotten to a point yet where you may be out of your parents or caretakers home. Well, now you're responsible for bills. Now you're responsible for this. You're responsible for that. That's the landscape. Right? So a key idea, a key idea in this journey in life is that there's one thing that is most important beyond all of the things in your journey. Family's important, right? Your health is important. But the most important thing that you have right now is time. Time. You can have family, but if you don't have time, family doesn't matter. You can have the best health in the world. But if you have no time, that health does not matter. You can have all the money in the world. But if you don't have time, what does that matter? Your time is of the utmost importance in this journey in life. So I say that right up front. Don't waste your time. Because that is something that you will never, never get back. You have to be very intentional about how you use your time. That is the most valuable thing that you have. Right. So now in this journey of life, there are three things and I'm going to say a lot of things up here. And, you know, I only have 45 minutes and I'm like, Dang, I can talk about this for eight hours straight. <laughs> right. Um, on this journey. There are three things that you always have to keep in mind, in addition to time. On this journey, there are things that you're going to learn that you will always need for your journey. You will always need certain things. And you have to figure that out on your own, right? You may have some people around you that can give you insight to show you the value of some things that you have right now. 
that you're going to need for the duration of your journey. There are other things that you are going to have to give up. You're going to have to get rid of some things because they are not going to be beneficial for you in your journey. The older you get, the less valuable certain things become. And if you're still holding on to it, it devalues you yourself and it compromises or undermines your ability to be successful in your undertakings and reach a goal. I'm going to explain all of this in a minute. And then the third thing that happens in this journey is there are things that you're going to learn new that you've never thought about before. Things that you've tried, that you've learned like, oh my goodness, I, I love this. I have a, a certain gift for this. There are things that you're going to have to learn new, which means you're going to have to be open-minded in some capacities. Which also means it's going to require an attitude adjustment too. Because sometimes it's difficult to make changes when it's not on your own terms. Think about that with, you know, your household. It may be easy for you to make changes when you're doing it yourself. But when somebody comes up and tells you, change this right now, it may be a little bit more difficult for you to do that, right? So in your journey, there are certain things that you're going to learn new that is going to require an attitude adjustment because you might have some very steep habits, you know, even something as simple as diet. There may be things that you've been eating that you love. You've been eating it for the last 10 years, and you learn that you should not eat that anymore. Some people could just give it up and be like, oh, I'm not eating that anymore. But sometimes it may take time for you to get certain things out of your system, right? So let me go back to the first point that I made. In your journey, there are certain things that you were given already that you have right now that will always be of value for the duration of your life. Let me give you a personal example. Um, my mother, she was a social psychologist, right? And my father, he was a tradesman, but he also collected African artifacts. So I had a, a kind of unique upbringing with me and my siblings. We were taught to be socially conscious. They were also affiliated with the Black Panthers. We were taught to be culturally conscious. And we were taught to be critical thinkers, not to just take things on faith value or just accept what someone's telling you. We were taught to think, not what to think, how to think, to think for ourselves, right? So living in a household like this with a, with a parent who was a social psychologist, <laughs> she would always analyze you. And I didn't understand it when I was a child, <laughs> right? As I got older, I started to understand the way that she engaged me and my siblings. And having that type of relationship with my mother, um, it taught me the importance of knowledge. She got her degree at Naga University. And she was in her late 40s. She had six children. And she did that in three years. So that kind of gives you a sense of her sense of ambition and drive, right? Um, and she also had that type of expectation for me and my siblings in terms of education and seeking knowledge, right? Um, so learning that from her, I realized that knowledge is not just information. Knowledge is a compound word. You look at it, you know, I'm not sure if you've ever heard the phrase, the devil is in the details. How many people have heard that phrase before? When you look at the details of some things, you can see ideas that may have bypassed your critical thinking, right? So you look at the word knowledge, it's a compound word, know and ledge, know, ledge. So the more that you know, the more that you learn, the more aware you become, the more conscious you become. And at the same time as your awareness expands, you start to see the ledges or the limits that you set for yourself. You start to know the ledge, right? And when you know the ledge, you're less likely to fall over the edge. Does that make sense to everybody? 
a lot of times you see people in life where they take a, a, a big fall or they fall victim to certain things in life. And a lot of times that's because they did not know the ledge. They didn't know their own personal limit. How many people have you seen that may have died from a drug overdose or you see it on the news or some of you may even have people in your family that have gone through something like that, right? Or alcoholism or a lot of different things. Sometimes people may not know their own limits or where they need to start, the type of restrictions and boundaries that they need to set for themselves, which makes them more susceptible to falling over the edge, right? So knowledge is important in that way. And at the same time, knowledge represents a foundation that gives you access to wisdom. Wisdom doesn't come before knowledge. You can't be wise if you don't know nothing first, right? So knowledge precedes wisdom. The more that you know, the more that you learn, now you have access to wisdom because wisdom is right discernment. Discernment is judgment. It's impossible to rightly judge something if you don't know nothing first. And the beauty of what I'm saying is I don't care if you believe me. Live your life long enough. Put your own theories to the test and see if what I'm sharing with you is true or not. Because time will always test any of our ideas that we have. Right? So in other words, go out here and try to make a whole bunch of decisions without knowing something first and see how far that gets you. It won't get you very far. And that's not a sustainable outlook on life. So knowledge is, is critically important as a foundation in terms of you having access to wisdom. Right? This is something that I learned from my mother. She may have not put it in those words because she had a funny sense of humor. But this is the way that I, 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 I articulate what it is that I learned from her. This is something that I've carried from a child all the way to the age that I am right now. So there are things like that that you're learning from your parents, your caretakers, your educators, your administrators, people around you that will be of value to you for the rest of your life. The rest of your life. And one way for you to be able to assess that value is to be observant. Look at the people around you. See how they live. See the things that they're doing. Study history. His story, another compound word, because in history, it shows you a lot of the flaws that men or males were making because it's history, right? It's not her story. It's not the story. So when you study some of those events of the past, you can see how sustainable certain ideas are or what things people were doing. How many people have studied Greek, Greek history? None of you really studied Greek history. Greek as a West, Greece as a Western society <laughs> set the foundation for a lot of the ideas and the beliefs of the Romans. Right? A lot of the beliefs and the ideas that we see in Europe come from Rome and come from Greece. They call America the new world because Europe is considered the old world. So if you want to get some insight into the way people do things here in America and certain ideas that people have here in America, you can trace certain ideas forensically, right? And when I say forensically, I'm not talking about going on Google and looking at uh, Wikipedia and thinking that you know some research, <laughs> right? I'm talking about looking at various different layers of ideas to get a well-rounded perspective of a subject. Please support and share with your networks our Atlantis School Renovation Project. Through a recently acquired property here in the city of Niagara Falls, New York, we are doing renovations to establish an early childhood learning center and after-school program for youth in our city. Despite students of color representing more than half the student population in this country, black men represent less than 2% of that teacher workforce. So as a black educator, my voice and presence within the lives of children 
is critical to combating family dysfunction, juvenile delinquency, and creating an inclusive workforce that ensures that all of our nation's students receive a quality, culturally enriched education, which consists of various projects, programs, and initiatives such as this cool animation series. This is not simply my profession. It is also my passion and my purpose. We would really appreciate your support and sharing this initiative with your networks. Thank you.